Electronic hobbyist or professional like you who does not have a good power supply cannot get improved. Having an efficient power supply is a win for a beginner. It may help you in tough conditions. This is my adjustable pocket size power supply. However, I have a Benchlab power supply, but this one is very straight and pleasant to use in most cases and helped me so many times. For example, I saw high current amount on its display and it made me aware of danger. In this video, I'm gonna talk about this and show you how to make something like this to fully understand what is going on inside this. Please stay with me in the rest of this video. This is beating heart of our power supply, an efficient switching buck regulator. This regulator can provide up to 3 amps of current, so we can use it in our power supply and many other electronic projects. Voltage regulators can convert a wide range of variable input voltage to a steady and fixed output voltage. Regulators are much more diverse than ever before and got many shapes, types, kinds and characteristics. I will talk about them in detail in one of my next videos. But for now, I'm gonna show you a Mitchell friend. Maybe this guy is most famous regulator in the world. Most of us start learning electronics with him. When I was a child, I used him to build my very first 5 volt power supply with a transformer, diode bridge, capacitor and some other components beside him. It is super simple to use, just apply input voltage to input terminal, then regulated voltage is ready on output terminal. The simplicity of use in linear regulators cause misunderstanding for newbies. They think same thing about switching regulators, but switching regulators differ a little bit. For example, look here at datasheet of LM2596 switching regulator. Here in two page down, there is a sample circuit. All of these components are critical and none of them should be ignored. And all capacitors and inductors should be selected carefully in exact value. For example, this inductor is 33 microhenry and should be selected exactly 33 microhenry. Never use capacitors and inductors else than those values. Using switching regulators in projects is difficult related to linear regulators, but it's worth it. And also there is a shortcut to use them. This is LM2596 regulator and these are components required to configure the regulator properly. You have to make PCB and then solder components on it and use it, but there is a shortcut. This module is available in market which all components needed to run the regulator is with that. It is super simple to use. These are input terminals and these are output terminals and output voltage is adjustable with this potentiometer. This module made LM2596 switching regulator easy to use. It has four terminals. Two of them are for input voltage and two others are for output voltage. You can apply a high DC voltage I mean maximum of 40 volts to input terminals and then your regulated and adjusted voltage is ready on output terminals. There is a potentiometer on module for tuning and adjusting output voltage. Some other models of this module got two or even three other potentiometers for other purposes. You can replace those potentiometers with panel mounted potentiometers and place the module in a box and then it is done, you have a pocket power supply. But every time you turn the potentiometer, you have to measure output voltage with a multimeter. And worse than that, you cannot monitor current amount the load draws. To answer those issues, we can use other module which is very simple to use and cheap. This is a panel mounted volt ampere meter. Its job is to measure and display voltage on this yellow wire and current flowing through these thick wires. It has five terminals. These two are used for measuring current and these three are for powering up the component and measuring output voltage. In our power supply project, these two thick wires will be serried with output terminals and this thin black wire will be grounded, this thin red wire will be connected to input voltage and this thin yellow wire will be connected to output voltage. Till now we considered two modules which are used in our packet power supply. Now it is time to wire up all those modules and components. 
You saw the potentiometer on this module and I already told that we will replace it with a panel mounted model. But there is a trick to enhance output voltage tuning. By connecting two potentiometers together, we can achieve more accuracy and fine tuning. How to do that? I will explain. Your now potentiometers have three terminals. If you connect side terminals to DC voltage, middle terminal will produce variable voltage according to its handle position. When I turn the handle, voltage in middle pin changes. Now, if you connect two potentiometers together in this way, you can fine-tune the voltage. This is the trick for fine-tuning output voltage. You can use these two potentiometers in this way instead of one potentiometer for fine-tuning. This one is 10 kilo ohm and used for tuning voltage from zero to maximum voltage and this one is one kilo ohm and used for fine tuning. Now we all set and we are ready for building. Let's wire up our packet power supply. Firstly we have to use a panel mount DC power jack and attach it into a box and connect two of its three terminals to input terminals of this LM2596 module. Uh, input terminals of this module are here. This is positive input terminal and this is negative input terminal. Let's look at terminals of this component. It has three terminals. This is positive input terminal. This is negative voltage input terminal. And this one is for detecting whether the jack is inserted or not, which is not used in this project. Remember that there is three terminals on panel mount DC power jack. Two of them are for DC voltage and third one is for detecting whether the jack is connected or not, which is not used in this project. Next step is to replace potentiometer on LM2596 module with two panel mounted potentiometers and connect power input of display module to input voltage. Now, what is next step? Out terminals. I'm gonna use these connectors as output. These connectors makes it possible to use these alligator clips with our final power supply. Red connector will be connected directly to positive terminal of output voltage in LM2596 module. 
Black one will be connected to first terminal of current sensor in display module. Second terminal of current sensor in display module will be connected to negative terminal of output voltage in LM2596 module. Last thing to do is to connect voltage sensing terminal in display module to positive terminal of output voltage in LM2596 module. <laughs> Okay, it is down. Let's test it with a multimeter and a high power resistor to see how much current it can provide. Voltage shown here is wrong. Voltage should be 22.8 volts, but here is 23.5 volts. Fortunately, there are two tiny potentiometers on display module to calibrate voltage and current units. So, I just need a tiny screwdriver to calibrate units and set them on right points. To calibrate voltage, I need to connect output voltage to a multimeter and adjust the tiny potentiometer on display module until voltage displayed correctly. Uh, I use this screwdriver. Yes, this is okay. Now I'm gonna calibrate current unit. To do this, I need a power resistor to draw current from or power supply and measure current with multimeter and then adjust current calibrator until current displayed correctly. Okay, it is perfect. This is my final test. You see voltage is adjustable through these potentiometers. This is for tuning and this is for fine tuning and uh, current amount is displayed here mission is completed right now but i'm thinking about making a battery powered version of this power supply and make it portable is it a good idea if it is let me know in comment section below if you want it i will make it for you and show you how to do it by yourself thanks for watching if you like this video make sure to subscribe for more